Well, well, well. What turned up in the post a couple of days ago? Good morning and welcome back to the workshop. As you saw from that intro, I've got some exciting developments going on on the Maid of Kent. As a bit of an update, I haven't spent much time in the workshop over the last six months or so. Um, as you're about to see, I've been working on machining the coupling rods, which uh, need some aesthetic work done to them. And I came across a few problems and they seem to just uh, mount and mount and mount and I found myself increasingly frustrated and I figured it was probably time to take a break and step back for a little while, which I have done. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to go straight back into it, but I realised I had some footage of that uh, machining and, as we said, some of the exciting developments you saw in the intro. So, let's get to it. I decided to open out the bearings on one side by about 10 thou each, and I've worked out um, that if you were to hold one wheel straight and this one was 10 thou loose, um, as you push this wheel round, you get that one degree of slop. So, um, in doing so, we've got a really nice rolling chassis now. It's super smooth. Um, I'm, I'm not even really remotely worried about anything to do with that at all. Of course, the first problem I come to is that I don't have enough travel to get this table up high enough for the milling cutter in this position. So I originally had it clamped in the vise with pins through the coupling rod holes, and I was gonna go across the top surface of the coupling rod and then flip it 180 degrees and do the other side. Um, I think that would have been a good idea, um, but I just didn't have the support and the rigidity in that, in that arrangement. And I'm sure I could have done something else, but I think this should work. <laughs> The second problem I had was when holding this, the faces of the rods where they were laser cut were hardened, or they become hardened to, to some degree. Now you'll notice I've got an extended long reach milling cutter in here, which is, is not what I normally use. This is a half inch for rigidity. Um, and that's because I've got the, the riser block here. And this riser block is fantastic to raise the vertical head to give me loads of clearance here for different things. Um, but not that great in this position, because in this position, I want it quite close to the table. And actually this table doesn't go up enough with the head down in its maximum level. There was just enough vibration and just enough pressure on the on the rods because of the steel being hardened that it was just shoving the coupling rods away. And so the back end, I just took, lo I did one side, did half of the other, realized there was a problem, did loads of small cuts, just coming down, you know, like not trying to do the full depth. Um, just all of those things together, it's just meaning that it's a bit laborious. Thankfully, because this is a horizontal machine, and I have a, I there's normally a capstan wheel here that I've had removed for ages, but underneath, you can just see the little bit there. So having unlocked the handle and the quick traverse, I can now move this way back to where we started, come across by slow, quick traverse it back, and so on and so on. So let's do a bit of that. I feel I must point out, this is wrong. And I've, I was, this was what this chuck looked like when I was machining these rods, and I just, there was vibration, but I assumed it was because the rods are only pinned at both ends or something along those lines. But actually, this is actually wrong and not the way to do it. So mid-engineering, I think, is the uh, the chap who uh, has a video, suggests the correct way to do this is to, uh, in this sequence, is to loosen the, loosen the cutter, is to snug up the chuck up to the, or chuck the screw thread up to the chuck. Like so, finger tight. Then screw in the cutter and then tighten up the top. Apparently that is the way 
to ensure that this stays nice and rigid all throughout. So zooming in, you can see we've got a, a boss here, or the, the embryonic part of a boss, and I think, while well, this is set up like this, I want to get this in here. So I need to bring down this surface that this clamp is on top of, down by about a sixteenth of an inch. So I think you'll agree, a bit of a series of calamities there. <laughs> we have any excuse. Um, it's all good fun though, and it's been an uh, instructive experience. I've machined a spacer for the drawbar here, but unfortunately, I don't know if I can, you can see that too well, there is still this slop in the horizontal arbor. <laughs> And of course, one of the most important things with the horizontal milling machine is this overarm support. <laughs> There's a bearing that should be in there, which is completely missing. So I need to get a new one of those. And by the magic of video editing, the bearing has arrived. Let's get that in the overarm and do some milling. So I think we might have to call this one quits because I've tried doing some test cuts off camera and we're still getting loads of vibration and loads of noise. And I can actually still deflect the auto lock chuck in the horizontal arbor um not loads but a fair bit so i did some machining as you can see here on this coupling rod um, but it just sounded like a bag of hammers in a tumble dryer and that just can't be right there's there's got to be something else going on here the plot thickens this is the drawbar in the arbor and this is a locking ring that I found in my box of spares. And it would appear that having this locking ring up here is what is required to preload the bearings on the spindle to reduce play. And in fact, there should be two of these. And this is pretty much bringing you up to speed. So let's fast forward back to the present day. As you can see, the boiler is a bit of a beast. And in fact, it's incredibly heavy, far more heavy than I would have thought. And uh, so uh, the very stiff suspension on the, the maid, I'm not so worried about anymore because this weighs a bloody ton. Let's get it unwrapped and have a look at it. What a thing of beauty. And one would hope so given the price, but that's just the way things are. I certainly couldn't have got the, this kind of uh, effect doing it myself. And though that is definitely on the cards for me to look at, I'm really pleased that I, uh, I bought this. I got it from Western Steam and that's Helen State and Susie and the team there. Um, their waiting list was quite long, but it's significantly cut down. And uh, I was able to get this about six months before I was planning to. Let's have a closer look. There's the stamp of the boiler. That's the, uh, the code, the rating of the boiler, up to uh, 90 PSI in normal usage. And so here's the documentation we get with this. Descriptions, safety, operation, disclaimer, material spec, analysis, and so on. And the certificate of conformity, which is, uh, Definitely something we're going to need to run this down at Sunny Beachhurst.